In the heart of South Texas, where the sun-baked plains meet the shimmering Gulf Coast, there's a ribbon of asphalt known as Interstate 37. Now, this highway stretches from the bustling port of Corpus Christi near the Gulf of Mexico all the way up to the historic city of my hometown, San Antonio. This is more than just a thoroughfare. It's a living testament to the rich tapestry of South Texas history. See, long before the first European settlers arrived, South Texas was home to a diverse array of indigenous people, the Karakawans, the Kuwila Tekins and the Tonkawa tribes, they, they roamed the plains here, hunting deer and snakes and rabbits and gathering all sorts of wild plants that grow along the banks of its many rivers and creeks. Evidence of their presence can still be found in the form of ancient rock art and archaeological sites that are scattered all across this, this region. Now the land itself is harsh, as you can tell by the video. But it's a beautiful landscape of rolling grasslands, thorny brush, meandering rivers, all sorts of creeks and draws. The Nueces River, which roughly parallels Interstate 37 for most of its length, along with the beautiful San Antonio River, well, they provide a lifeline for both humans and wildlife. Their waters sustained a rich ecosystem of fish, birds, and all sorts of mammals, while its banks provided a fertile soil for agriculture, which kept this region and much of the state fed for practically our entire existence. You see the arrival of Spanish explorers in the 16th century, this marked a turning point for South Texas. Alvar Nunez Cabeza de Vaca, a shipwrecked conquistador. He wandered through the region in the 1530s. He took notes of his encounters with indigenous people and he also made notes of the natural wonders. Everywhere he went there was something. Well, de Vaca, he made a note of it and he kept a good record of it. Because of that, Spanish missions and presidios soon came to follow. They established a foothold in the region, introducing European livestock, crops, and, of course, all kinds of diseases. The clash of cultures was often pretty violent, but it also led to a unique blend of traditions that can still be seen here in South Texas today, even in our food, our music and the architecture. It's what makes South Texas and the area alongside of Interstate 37 so unique. Well, the 19th century saw the rise of Texas as an independent republic. And later, it became a state here in the United States. The fight for independence from Mexico it was bloody as hell. And it was a dramatic chapter in Texas history. Battles like the Alamo and San Jacinto, they became legendary tales of heroism and sacrifice. Smaller battles, but equally as deadly at places like Goliad and Gonzales. The expansion of railroads and the discovery of oil in the 20th century transformed South Texas into a booming economic powerhouse. Places like Corpus Christi with its deep water port became a hub for shipping and industry, while the oil fields 
around San Antonio fueled the growth of cities and towns along the route that would eventually become Interstate 37. Interstate 37 isn't just a road, it's a thread that weaves together the stories of countless individuals who have lived, worked, and traveled along the path of this interstate highway before it even existed. There's the rancher George West who spent his life raising cattle on this same land that his ancestors settled years ago. Eventually, he would create a town there to carry his own name. And then there was the truck driver from Three Rivers who hauls goods up and down the highway. The oil field worker. They all witnessed the changing seasons and the ebb and flow of traffic and customs and people. Then there's the family from San Antonio who makes the annual pilgrimage down to the beach in Corpus Christi. Their car packed with towels and sunscreens and memories in the making. You see, this is more than just a road. It's more than just an interstate. It's more than just a lifeblood that connects people to places. It's a history of a land, a people, and a culture. See, today, Interstate 37 remains a vital artery for South Texas. It connects urban centers with rural communities and natural landscapes. It serves as a conduit for commerce, culture, and adventure. The highway's future is kind of uncertain as new technologies and changing demographics shape the way that people travel and the way that people live. But one thing is for sure, the story of Interstate 37, it's far from over going to continue to evolve and adapt, reflecting the ever-changing landscape of South Texas and the enduring spirit of our people who call this land home. The tale of Interstate 37 itself is a testament to the ambition and progress of the mid-20th century. In the years following World War II, America experienced a boom in automobile ownership and a thirst for efficient travel. The Federal Aid Highway Act of 1956 was championed by then-President Dwight D. Eisenhower. This set the stage for the creation of this interstate highway system, a network of what was then considered high-speed, limited-access roadways that could crisscross the nation. In South Texas, this vision manifested in Interstate 37. This is a 143-mile stretch of concrete that I said earlier connects Corpus Christi and San Antonio. The highway was first designated in 1959 following the path of the existing state highways and incorporating sections of US-281. Construction began in earnest in the 1960s with crews tirelessly working to carve a path through the South Texas brush country and the landscape here. One of the most ambitious engineering feats of the project was the construction of the interchange with Interstate 10 in San Antonio. This is known as the Spaghetti Bowl due to its complex network of ramps and flyovers. This was a modern marvel of engineering at the time and it opened tra to traffic in 1967 marking a, a major milestone in the construction of Interstate 37. But by the early 1980s, Interstate 37 was mostly complete. It provided fast and efficient route between two major cities. The highway's impact was immediate and profound. It opened up South Texas and increased trade and tourism. This facilitated the movement of goods and people in ways that were previously unimaginable. The highway was so 
broad that it spurred a growth of suburban communities along its route. Towns like Pleasanton and Floresville, they saw a surge in population as families sought a more relaxed lifestyle within commuting distance of places like San Antonio. New businesses and industries sprang up to cater to the needs of travelers and residents alike. Interstate 37 played a crucial role in disaster response and recovery. It still does today. During Hurricane Celia in 1970 and Hurricane Harvey in 2017, the highway served as a vital evacuation route for coastal communities. It made easier the movement of emergency supplies and personnel aiding in the recovery efforts in the aftermath of these devastating storms. Over the years, Interstate 37 has undergone many upgrades and expansions to accommodate the volume of traffic that it sees. New interchanges, overpasses, and access roads have been added to improve safety and efficiency. The highway has also become a corridor for high-speed internet connectivity, which is still limited at best here in the state of Texas. It does bring limited digital access to rural communities that were once underserved and for the large part still underserved, but it's getting a little better. Today, Interstate 37 stands as a testament to the vision and determination of those who built it. It's a lifeline for South Texas connecting people and places, facilitating commerce, providing access to vital services. As the region continues to grow and evolve, Interstate 37, it will undoubtedly continue to play a crucial role in the future of my home, South Texas.